Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. By the way, the vanity code for us on Roku is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just point out that I'm in the crosshairs here on this Nanito Denier Nicholas Walters fight. Right? Just full disclosure. Um, I think longtime subscribers know I'm really only interested in making money betting on sports. Right? But for people looking for biases who want to post things saying Dwyer you don't like this guy because of this reason or Dwyer you're biased toward this guy because of this reason just understand that I'm in the Bay Area one of the biggest names in Bay Area boxing is Nanito Denier right he's based in the Bay Area but also understand I was born in St. Joseph's Hospital in Kingston Jamaica and understand that I'm a Jamaican, right? I'm an American citizen, but I was born in Jamaica, right? And understand Nicholas Walters is the biggest fighter right now coming out of Jamaica. Now, really, for hardcore gamblers, none of this should matter. My pick in this fight, the person I expect to win, if I had one pick to make, it would be on Nicholas Walters to win this fight. Why? Because I see deterioration in the Nito Denier. Right? Denier to me looks like he's fallen in love with his left hook. Right? I notice that his volume is down. I notice that there are times where he can't set up other punches. Right? He looked uninspired to me. He was being outboxed in the Vic Darchinian rematch. I thought in the Vecchia fight he was looking for a way out. I'm not sure looking at that film if Vecchia did anything wrong. Right? I thought Denier had an injury, got a knockdown, and realized that he would win on the scorecards, having been the fighter who got the one knockdown in the fight, and I thought he wanted that fight to end right sports is a young man game there's a reason why a lot of sports that require hand-eye coordination think tennis for example are dominated by younger men right it's an aberration when you see a Roger Federer still hanging with the youngsters, right? Able to hang with an Andy Murray, an Adal, right? A uh, Djokovic. That's an aberration. And the reason it's an aberration is because Father Time catches up with all of us, right? You know, as Ali famously said, he could see the punches coming, but he just couldn't do anything about them later in his career. Right? Older athletes have a wealth of information. Right? They have a bigger knowledge base than they did when they first got in the sport. But they aren't able to pull the trigger. They aren't able to react as quickly as they did when they were younger. The reflexes start to go. You start to notice it in fights. I believe that if you look at films of the Nino Nader when he was younger, right, just compare and contrast the Nair Vic Darchinian 1 with the Nair Vic Darchinian 2. Just look at the low volume that the Nair puts down in the Mathabula fight. Look at how lost the Nair looks at times against Guillermo de Gundio. Now I know there are many of you who will point out that Denier is actually younger than Regundio. 
that De Nair chronologically isn't that old. But understand, as my cat here in the background knows, just understand that there's chronological age and then there is boxing age. Right? They're different. Right? In real life, we don't go around telling people, let's say someone turns 30, we don't say to them, hey, you know, the legs are the first to go. Right? We don't, we don't say that in real life. We say that in boxing. Because, of course, guys age differently in boxing. People understand that as you age, you lose certain skills. What I want people to do is to look at the post-fight interviews that the great Emmanuel Stewart gave after his fighter Lennox Lewis beat Mike Tyson. Right? Stewart candidly in interviews would talk about the fact that Tyson had a young man style. Right? Tyson was relying on reflexes. He would come in like this and then when he was younger he would see the punches you were throwing and then he would dodge the punches. Then he was quickly on you. Speed was a part of his game. Speed and power. The problem is, of course, as Tyson got older and his reflexes dulled a little bit, he had the same problem Ali had. He could see the punches. He just didn't have the reflexes to get out of the way of them. Right? Let me just say, I don't think Denier has the reflexes anymore. I understand this is just the opinion of one guy on the internet. Right? But... You know, I'm going to fearlessly go wherever the film takes me. So I don't believe Denier is still Denier. Right? In the mainstream press, who really has the incentive to make statements like that? Right? Because, of course, let's face it, people want big fights to happen. Denier should be applauded for taking on lethal opponents like Nicholas Walters, unbeaten opponent, right? People also respect what Denier has accomplished in the ring. The Montiel fight, that's a classic. The first Vic Darchinian fight, that's a classic, right? He's had some classical fights. He has deserved to be. In the past, on the top 10 pound for pound list, if you go back through my videos, you'll even see a video where I compare him style-wise to Sugar Ray Robinson, right? The problem, though, is Father Time hasn't stopped. I don't believe that's still who he is. I believe he's someone with a fastball, right? He has a left hook that can knock out anybody. I just don't see the rest of the pitches at that point except for the uppercut. I'll give him an uppercut. He can throw a pretty good uppercut as well. Right? I feel it's Nicholas Walters' time. Walters looks much fresher to me. Right? Take a look. Just compare and contrast. The last Darchinian fight involving Denier with Walters against Darchinian. Right? Walters didn't need the knockout in that fight, folks, because even without the knockout, Walters was dominating that fight. Right? Walters, in my opinion, has the reflexes that Denier has lost. So, both guys are saying, hey, we expect knockouts. Okay, great. Fighters always talk big before fights. But I believe Denier's only chance of winning this fight is by knockout. If you look at the betting line, it's interesting. I would argue that Denier has been in the public eye much longer than Nicholas Walters. But yet, the casinos have Walters as the favorite. I'm telling you, there's some betting sharps out there. I'm telling you, there's some sharp money that has looked at this fight and that privately believes that Walters, the lesser known fighter, is the better fighter. 
I agree with them. The bet I'm recommending here is Walters to win the fight. I believe right now that's a minus 125. Hedged with Denier by knockout. Right? I believe that unless Denier is throwing home run punches, a great left hook, a pretty good uppercut. In fact, Denier, I'll give him credit, can throw that uppercut with both hands. Unless he's throwing home run punches, I don't believe there's much else there. Right? Don't look at the Regundio fight, because Regundio is a great boxer. Look at the the, uh, the Darchinian rematch. How is Vic Darchinian, who's older than Denier chronologically, right? Who I believe announced his retirement after the Walters fight. How is Vic Darchinian outboxing Nanito Denier by such a wide margin early in the fight? You know the loss of reflexes is subtle. But look at that, Phil. Aren't there times to you when Denier is slow in reacting? Right? Younger Denier was actually known as the Filipino Flash. Right? He had hand speed. He had reflexes. Right? I don't think he does any more. I think Walters wins this fight. I'll hedge the play with Denier by KO. I'll concede that if Denier wins a decision, and understand Denier is the better known boxer. He's also won some interesting decisions, like that Mathabula decision. I'll concede that if Denier wins by decision, I'll be here online doing a post-fight video with egg all over my face. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think what we're going to find out is that Denier is living off of a fastball at this stage in his career, right? He doesn't have the rest of his game because he no longer has the quick reflexes, right? Understand many greats have suffered diminished reflexes later in their careers. I encourage people to look at films of the man I consider to be one of the best I've ever seen in any weight class, right? Young Ali, we're talking about from the 1960s, right? You're going to see that Ali, that Ali, moved around the ring. You're going to notice that when he fights even big punchers like Sonny Liston and Liston throws a punch. Ali, while moving, just leans his head back, right? Doesn't have to put his hands up. There's no rope-a-dope. He's too fast to be caught on the ropes. Even when he fights a hunter like Cleveland Williams, you're going to notice he doesn't really have to raise his hands. He's operating in a different time dimension than Cleveland Williams. But then he gets to his 30s. There are other things going on. He's out of the ring, Vietnam, stuff like that. Then he gets back in the ring. And you'll notice that the Ali in the 70s, by the time he reaches Foreman, is a different fighter. Right? He has to have his hands up. Why? Because the reflexes that allow just the upper body movement, right? We'll call it the Ray Leonard game. The reflexes that allowed him to be Ray Leonard in the ring are no longer there. No doubt he knew the sport better. No doubt he understood how to pace himself better. Right? But the guy who had liniment in his eyes against Sonny Liston and still couldn't get caught by Liston while he's blind during that round of their first fight. That guy no longer existed. Young Nanito Denier no longer exists. This is a different fighter. I believe this Denier loses to Nicholas Walters. I'll hedge the play with Denier by KO. 
Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.